okay. I had Welcome to Three Questions with, say, my friend Darlene Danielle so joining us. Hey, Darlene, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Glad so, to be here. Let's talk a little bit about your practice. You handle bankruptcy, correct? I do. Uh, and I also do social security disability work, um, as well as some probate and family law. And I'm licensed in New Hampshire as well as Massachusetts. So Darlene, bankruptcy obviously is a very emotional topic. When should someone consider declaring bankruptcy? Well, we're heading towards the April 15th tax deadline. And this is always a good time of year to think about your finances, um, especially if you feel your finances are not going well. Um, one of the first things I suggest people do is to sit down and write a budget um, and be realistic about it. Um, usually it's not the income side that's an issue, it's the expenses. People tend to be unrealistic about what they spend um, on entertainment, on transportation costs, and all those little things that add up like the cappuccinos that we all love. Um, and to sit down and see if they're in the negative and make sure to include those credit card payments um, because a lot of times people will just sort of say, well, I can pay the minimum, so I'm doing okay. And then they get to the point where they can't. So if the budget's really tight or you're in the red, um, that's the time to start thinking about whether or not bankruptcy is an option. So Darlene, what's the process? Because there's different types of bankruptcy you can declare to. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, for individuals who don't own businesses, there are two options, uh, which are Chapter 7 and Chapter 13. Um, chapter 7 is what we're most familiar with, and it's the most common type, and it's called a liquidation, which for a business means that uh, everything gets sold off and the business closes. But for individuals, it's different. For individuals, you get rid of most debt, um, and you go on after that, obviously, uh, unlike a business. So um, it's a very, um, as you said, emotional process and one that people really need to consider carefully because there are some non-bankruptcy options that, um, that are available. Um, and I view ba bankruptcy as a last resort. Um, not that it's a terrible thing, but um, I encourage people to try to resolve debt if they can outside of bankruptcy because it does have some long-term um, credit um, consequences. So basically they should probably stop by reaching out to you and maybe trying to work with the creditors first? Well, um, that is an option. The only thing is if you work with your creditors and you make um, deals with your creditors, anything that's written off, um, becomes taxable income. So people need to be really careful about that. And that's why I think it's a good time of year to discuss this with your tax advisor um, because um, doing it on your own is not a good thing. Um, people get surprised when they think they do the right thing and they make deals with their creditors and then they start getting 1099s the following January for all of these thousands of dollars that are deemed to be income. So talk to your tax advisor, seek the advice of an attorney, but first sit down and do that budget because that's a real eye opener. And it's gonna be painful if you are not on a budget or you don't regularly think about what you spend as opposed to what's coming in. And that's the very first step that people need to take, whether or not they end up filing or not. I really like that advice because most people never take the time to do the budget. And as you mentioned, Darlene, they're simply making those minimum payments and, you know, it's not even covering interest and stuff. So it really makes sense to, you know, once you recognize the fact that maybe you are a little over your head to reach out to you and say, before, like you said, you go and you make a deal, like, oh, all right, you know, I called my creditors, I accepted this payment, which was great. You know, they're not charging me all that money, but when you get the, you know, the 1099, and it, you know, next year, and like, oh my God, now this is all taxable income. So it's okay. best to talk to you before we do anything to make sure we don't think we're doing well and put ourselves in a, in a worse situation, right? Yes, and, and you know, the tendency today is for people to 
try to do things on their own, which is very admirable. But um, what we do with our debts um, has, you know, legal and tax consequences. And, you know, people can do things in good faith and try to help themselves, which, as I said, is very admirable. But they can put themselves in an even worse position because it's better to owe a credit card company than to owe the IRS. Great. So, Darlene, how do people reach out to you? How can they learn more? How can you help them? Um, you can reach me by telephone at 603-898-4383, and my extension is 100. We also have a website, which is uh, www.darlenedaniellelaw.com, and my last name is spelled D-A-N-I-E-L-E. Um, I'm also on Facebook, and I have a Facebook page that people can go to, um, and you can message me on Facebook. That's probably the best way to get my attention initially. Um, and I look forward to helping people. Um, we do, you know, take phone calls and try to give people some initial insight over the phone. Um, and I would love to, you know, make contact with people who are out there and have questions. Awesome. Dolly, I really appreciate you taking time to come on the show. Thank you for inviting me, Kevin. I really enjoyed this. You just watch three questions with Dolly and Danielle. If you have any questions about the New England B2B Networking Group, send us an email, kevin at newenglandb2bnetworking.com.